welcome along to deepest, darkest Kent. Well, for me. For, yeah, for you, not for me. No. 25 minutes from my house, so mm. it's a nice local pond. For yeah, me. I do. I was in Kent last week filming. I, well. I spent more time in Kent than I do at home. And where you were is only about 15, 20 minutes yes. from here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar so, neck of the woods. Yeah, the lake that we're at is Remby Lake, which is on the RG. Yeah, RG Fisheries membership. Yeah, it's a syndicate um, of, I'm not sure how many members they've got at the moment, mm. but. And, well, an extra member now, because you're now. Yes, I've now got a ticket on here, but. I'm yet to wet a line, so this will be my first trip on here. Yeah, my first trip um, as well. First time I've seen it, you've had a couple of walk rounds. Yeah, I had a walk round and met the bailiffs before, and I popped down here on Sunday just to have a little mooch, just to meet a couple of the other members and get yep. a bit of a feel for the place. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a bit unknown for me, which is quite nice. There's a little mm. bit of mystery about it. Um, I think it's got quite a good stock of fish and a good head of 30 Yeah, the pounders. fish look amazing. There's a little lodge in there by the car yeah. park, which all the members can use. And I think there's eventually there's going to be a fully functional kitchen in there. Um, but on one wall, they've just got this massive bank of just pictures of fish, aren't they? And they're yeah. all big ones, and yeah, they're all lovely. lovely scaly ones and everything. Yeah, and they go up to sort of mid 40s in here as well, but a massive stock of yeah. 30 pounders in there. Yeah. Good head of 30s in here. Yeah, so I think we've got a good chance of getting a, a good night. Yeah, really. fingers crossed. So lakes is about four and a half acres, is that right? I think four, so, it's hard to four, tell. It's a long lake, mm. isn't it? You've got a big bowl end one end where the car park is, and it narrows off in a channel, and then we've got another bowl in here where we are in the middle, and then we've got a really lovely carpy little channel down that far yeah. end, haven't we? That's, yeah, it's a proper cool, cool, cool looking place. I'm really looking forward to this. Now, the opposite bank, you can't fish on there. No, so no A lot fishing. of the fishing is to the opposite bank, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Uh, there's loads of wicked carpy holes, weeping willows, pads. It's got it all going on. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of everything on here, isn't there? Yeah, it looks lovely. absolutely awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. So the motto is really for this film is to do a bit of bait fishing, especially this time of year, getting into the autumn now. Yeah. And you would like to think that, you know, after spawning and all that, fish should be on the munch, fingers crossed. And well, we've seen a few, haven't we? Yeah, we've seen we a have. few bubbling, a bit fizzing. It's a really silty lake, this as well. So, and it's really shallow. It's only averaging about three to five foot deep. Yeah. So well, I think we're going to see them, especially in this sunshine. We're going to see them clouding up. We're going to see them sheeting up. So I think, although we're going to sort of set up camp in this central zone, mm. maybe getting on our toes, looking for fizzes, looking for bubbles, yeah. give them a bit of bait. I think they're going to be right up for it. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm really, I can't wait to get Rod into this walk, to be honest with you. It looks a mega, mega place. The fish are mega. I just want to get some rods out. I haven't so been I. buzzing like this for a long time, yeah. to be honest. Well, I say a long time. It's, uh, you know, I've been really looking forward to this. I know that this trip's been coming up for a while now. And, um, and yeah, seeing the fish that are on socials and what have you from it's here, cool, I just it? want to get one in my hands now. Definitely. So, right, we're in this central zone. I'd be happy either either side, but I guess we should flip, flip a coin. coin. Yeah. See who's going left and right and what have you. So, I'm going to go tails. Tails. Heads. Okay, it's your choice. I'm going to go on the right hand side. Go for I it. Thank you. I'm yeah, going to go on to the right because I like the look of that weeping willow over there. That I think we both like that. And and yeah, you won the toss last time when you were fishing with Bart anyway, so it's about time you lost yeah, something. Yeah, about so. time I lost something. So, to be fair though, that whole margin looks lovely anyway, yeah, doesn't it? And I think this central area gives us the most water out of most of the lakes. So yeah. I think, to be fair, between our six rods, we can sort of fan them out and just work out where these fish are feeding. Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Right, let's get some rods sorted. Yeah, we're good. Get a Happy up, days. Get sorted. Do, do, do. Right, well, as Moz has taken about seven hours to get himself set up and sorted, I don't really want to wait for him. So I'm going to start leading about. And the interesting bit is that far margin over there. There's a few really obvious holes in the bushes. You're allowed to use bait boats on here. So I think what's happening is you're getting a lot of these holes formed by people driving their boats in. So I'm just going to have lead around in those zones first, where it's obvious. Um, that was a little bit short, so I can just clip that up a little bit further. And um, yeah, I'm just going to do a little bit of investigating. I, want, I know this is a really shallow and silty lake, 
So I'm gonna try and find something a little bit firmer, something that sort of gives me the impression that something's been fed on. Um, and I'm just gonna set three separate little traps, I think, and uh, go from there. So yeah, just have a little look for something slightly firmer, see what these feel like, get the range right, get that wrapped up. And then what I can also do is, I might even have a little walk around the other side and just drop the lead in the edges just to see how close or how far off that margin I need to be. So yeah, let's give it a go, see what's out there. There she is. Right, well I've opted to chuck a marker float on the lead as well, just because chatting to the bailiff when I had my walk round, some of the far margin spots are really shallow, like we're talking like less than a foot deep. Um, I don't want to be that tight. I want to just make sure, although if I'm tight to an overhang, I want at least like three to four foot really of like a good bit of depth where I feel like they're going to pass through, especially some of them better fish as well. So it's taken a few chucks, but I've got this rod right in one of those holes and I'm getting three foot and if I come just slightly off of it I'm getting four foot so there's a little bit of a drop there um, but that seems like an all right zone so I can wrap that area up and um, that's one spot I can then do the same with the depth from that first spot I found that's two little traps there either side of an overhang and then I can walk around that I can trickle a little bit of bait in so now all I need to do is have a think about a third trap somewhere else which there's a rather attractive looking willow over there so I might even try that for a bit uh, so yeah, but for now, that's two spots. Great. Well, well, I've had a good lead about. Just attached a marker float now to my leading rod just to see what the depth is over there, because it's, I would imagine it's about 18, 19 wraps to where I'm fishing at the moment, not wrapped up or nothing, but just seeing what the depth is. And that is in the perfect place. Just take him out of the clip. It's gonna pop up, which is good. And I have got one, two, three. Yeah, so I've got three foot out there which I think is enough because bring that back now to where the lead is because all I've got to do is just pull it just a touch there and that should be now four foot one two three four or exactly so I'm just just on as it starts gradually going up the marginal shelf about half a foot into that and I think that's going to be the one it's not plugging in there whereas the other spots I've tried I've tried in front of the reeds there's a load of leaf matter on the bottom there's loads of twigs over there I managed to get a twig back I thought it was the reeds itself growing out into the lake but it's not it's loads of twigs and what have you down there so bin that off and I've moved slightly round to the right and left of the willow where the float is now lovely right to the willow lovely and you've got that three and a half foot seam before it drops down into four and then it's four pretty much most of the way back to be honest so that's where I'm gonna fish I'm gonna have a couple more casts just to double check it just make sure that it's not gonna plug in or pick anything up on the bottom but yeah, I think for two rods, that's me. Left and right of that willow in the very far corner there. And then there's a tree round to me right hand side here, which I might just fish a single one, to be honest. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with that, but I'll have a lead about over there as well. I think this is gonna be my main zone, this bit out here. Okay, that's 20 and three quarters. A little bit further than I thought it was gonna be. 
be a good cast with my little 10 foot rods that I've got with me as well, <laughs> which will be to everyone's amusement, I'm sure. But yeah, both rods, one left, one right of that willow, same distance, 20 and three quarters. I'm gonna pop the float up round there and then head on round and bait the area. So I'm probably gonna end up baiting a good zone around around the two rods so probably bait sort of you know the distance between them both so not just have one baited area on one rod one baited area on the other i would say they're probably a rod length apart so the baited area is going to be a good rod length of scattered s7 15 millers but what i will do is i'll put some crushed boilie around the hook baits so right that's the plan let's get on with it Okay, just getting my bait all prepped up. I would have done this at home, to be honest, but Vinny was whinging about it and wanted to do it on the bank. So we're doing it on the bank. So, right, first things first, I've got S7 with me this time round, which isn't a bait that I use a lot of the times, but I'm quite happy to use it whenever. And, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna be using it this trip. And I love the S7 and everyone loves the S S7 as well. I'm more of a switch and bug man, but I'll happily use it. <laughs> so, right, 15 millers straight into a bucket, nice and easy. I'm gonna pour the whole five kilos into there because I'm gonna put this bad boy all over it. Molasses, when was the last time you used molasses? I'll tell you what, it's been a while since I've used it and we were having a conversation in the offices the other day about it. Oh, it brings back loads of memories, that smell. Molasses, absolutely lovely. I'm going to lash that all over them 15 millers. Like I said, I would have probably done this at home if Vinny would have let me, but he wouldn't. So half a bottle of that on five kilos of bait should be more than enough, I would imagine. Give it a good mix up. Get all that lovely liquid on there and literally gonna let that sit for the rest of the trip. Easy as that. That's what I'm gonna use as my free offerings. Them 15 millers spread out over that large area over both of the rods. Perfect. Nice and easy. Now for the other part of the mix, obviously I said that I was gonna put crushed boilies over the top of the two rigs and that's gonna be some crushed. Oh. And that's gonna be some crushed 18 mil s7 i'm using 18 millers to crush them because they get upset in the offices when you start using eight millers to crush boil you should never do that <laughs> so yeah 18 millers in here in my little crusher just crush a few of those up nice and easy with this a bit of back and forward motion Probably crushed up about a kilo there. Stuck a kilo into that bucket. So we've got some nice, lovely crushed S7 there. The smell of that is absolutely gorgeous. But I'm gonna add another liquid to this, our brand new cayenne, cayenne, whatever you wanna call it. We're not too sure, we've been speaking amongst ourselves. I think it's called cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper liquid over the crushed S7. Abs oh god, she's a spicy one. Smells a bit Tabasco saucy, this one. Nice, hot and spicy. Not too much of that, about a quarter of a bottle around me crushed. Boilies there, and then I'm gonna add some S7 pellets. Probably a similar amount as what I put in there, crushed boilies. And then to finish that off, I'm just gonna put some oily hemp in there as well. Like I said, this is just gonna be for over the rig. So I'd imagine what I've mixed up there is gonna be enough for the trip. And we're here for a few nights and there's probably two and a half, maybe three kilos in the bottom of this bucket. And all I'll do, 
all I'll do to that now is if it dries out over the trip, I'll just carry on adding some of this pepper liquid to it just to bring it back to life a little bit more. But that's it, you know, nice and easy. We've got our S7 15 millers, which we're gonna spray around the two rods, soaked in molasses. And then we've got our boily crush that's gonna go right over the top of the rig with that hemp in there s7 pellets and that beautiful cayenne pepper liquid as well perfect a lovely banquet for any carp right let's get some rods in the pond right, i'm just knocking up a little bit of a mix to take around the other side when i come to bait up what i'm going to do is just get that marker float on both spots i'm going to do them one at a time go around there and trickle the bait in just to give myself a marker as to which section along that bank i'm going into and how far out to drop it in etc um, the mix I'm going in with is a mix that I've pretty much used exclusively for the last few years now. Um, I've just got a load of bug boilies and I soak them overnight in the Calamus Hydro. And then on top of that, I give them a final dose and then just put a big helping of insect meal over the top. It makes the baits really soft and it gives them that really nice crust over the top of them. I'll have a few holes in there and I'm just breaking most of them up with my fingers and my thumbs. And um, you've just got all sorts of bits and chops in there. This is gonna be a bit of a winter ticket for me this year. Um, and I'm gonna be putting a little bit more time in here as it's local, I'm gonna be dropping in and out, dropping some bait in. So for this being my first trip, it's a bit of a sort of suss a few things out really, get a bit of a feel for the place. So I'm just gonna go in with something I know that works everywhere else. Start off light with a little, with a little bit of bait first, see if we can nick a bite and then go from there, see if we can build something up. To this mix though, I am gonna add a little bit of crayfish maxi mix. Um, I know the fish here have been reared on pellet so I want to make sure I've got a little bit of that in the mix just to see if I can get them grubbing around. And then once I knock this up, I'm going to get around the other side, get the float up and um, yeah, see where that spot is. So it's getting into the evening now, and because there was a few fish down here first light this morning when I got here, this is right down a car park end, but the opposite side of the lake. We've got like a little bay here with some lily pads in it. And there was a little bit of bubbling off an aerator there, so I've just trickled a bit of bait in there. And I've got two little areas here that sort of look sort of half tempting for a, for a, a bit of stalking tomorrow. So I'm gonna to just trickle a bit of bait in these two spots. 
come down here in the morning if we've not had a bite there i want something that i can drop in on and maybe try and nick one as a bit of a last resort or something or a bonus fish i'm seeing your bow wave and your bubble in here so i reckon i mean we all know pads hold a lot of fish all, all the time anyway so i've just got a little bit of this mix here i'm just going to put a few handfuls there a few handfuls there job done check it in the morning and then we'll see if that brings us a cheeky little bonus fish Morning, Ol. Morning, Walrus. <laughs> <laughs> you snoring last night. Was I snoring? <laughs> it was horrendous. Shut up. <laughs> it was a good one, was it? Oh, it was, yeah, it's horrendous. Oh, sorry, mate. Wake me up about midnight. That's all right, it's fine. The missus is always having a go at me in the morning. Oh, about mate. My story. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, well, that was the only noise we well, heard exactly, last night. Well, exactly, that's then. the thing, isn't it? <laughs> because it's been very quiet on the rods, unfortunately. Yeah. We have seen a couple this morning, though, haven't we? You have. I have, yeah. So yeah. I got up first light, Vinny popped into the swim. Mm. Um, so we had a little look, had a little look at each end. And then when we came back, one had showed just off of your right hander. Yeah. And then just a couple of minutes before this update, where I've slung a single to my left, yeah, just one's one just there, shown we, right yeah. on it. So, and that was a good fish as well. Yeah. But there is a bit of fizzing up going on down the other ends of the lake. So obviously we trickled a little bit of bait in mm. last night, didn't we? So I reckon, yeah. Because not a lot's happening, we'll have a cup of tea, keep an eye out here for a minute, and it might be worth a little sneak around today. We've got yeah. the day, basically the, we've got the place to ourselves for the day, but at four o'clock today, members are allowed back and there's gonna be some more anglers turning up, no doubt. So we've got the opportunity today, if there is something happening somewhere, try and nick a bite, then we can decide whether we're gonna move or whether we need to come back in this swim before the other members come and set up wherever they wanna go. So. Mm. I think we've got to make the most of today, really. I think so, yeah. Well, I mean, it's still early now, isn't well, it? You know, yeah. So it's still good for a bite in the swim, but again, like like the way I left it last night, I just feel like we should have had one, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I said to you this morning, you know, the guys that you'd seen have their bites, were they tight lining, slack lining? You know, yeah. It feels like a sort of pond you'd want to slack line on, but at the it's same time... It's tough though, isn't it? When you're fishing to a far margin yeah. and you've got overhangs, you don't want to fish slack lines because no. by the time you get your indication, they're going to be all the way in the snags. Exactly that, yeah, exactly um, that. However, the, the catch reports that I do see on here are predominantly daytime bites. Mm. We didn't get our rods out till gone four o'clock no. yesterday with all the mucking around and the filming and all that lot. Yeah. So maybe today is the one. Let's so, you know, so, let's... See what they do. We've, we obviously we we found some fish in other areas. We've seen some fish on the edges of where we're fishing. Mm. Maybe today they move in here. Maybe we nick one. Maybe we've got to go somewhere else and nick one. Yeah, but yeah. I think we need to get on our toes and have a look around. I reckon so. Well, the, the beauty of us, you know, having three people here is that we can go off, bait yeah. things, get things ready, and then yeah. obviously leave the rods in the pond whilst people are manning them and uh, try and get something set up for. Yeah. for a bit of stalking sort of thing. So I yeah, that's I think a that's a good shout. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wicked. Well, let's uh, let's get Operation Go Stalking on the go then. Too right. Wow, we are playing an angry one. He's absolutely going crazy along the far margin here, right over the top of the left hander at the moment, but the middle rod has busted off. And I was feeling it was all a bit doom and gloom this morning. 
I'd gone up to the left hand side of the lake and bait my little stalking spot and I've just popped up there to have another look at it and the ducks are feeding on it, painful. There's only three ducks on the pond and they're eating the bait that I've put out there. So I've come back to the swim a bit dejected because Ollie's been up to the right hand side and he said that there's a few up there feeding. So yeah, like I say, I've come back to the swim, sat on my bed, all a bit doom and gloom thinking, this doesn't feel like it's gonna happen. Middle rod's gone. <laughs> <laughs> out of the blue jobby, the one that had cast right over the back there at 20 wraps, 20 and three quarters I think it is. Yeah, that's the one that's gone. Wicked. Let's hope we can get him in, eh? Oh, he's up. Oh, if you, um, I'm gonna need you to pick this left-hander up before I proper wipe him out, mate. Hang on a minute, I might be, might be able to get underneath. Oh, we're under. Oh, that was close. <sighs> Nearly done you there. Trying to fight this under Ollie's rods. I don't want to wipe him out. This is bite time, obviously. Here he is. It should be. Oh, we got a branch. Uh, we got a branch. Oh, he's a lovely one, look at him. Come on, you. Yes. <laughs> Branch and all. <laughs> Shame about the net, but you know, beggars can't be choosers and all that. If you poach someone's swim, then you should be allowed to poach their net as well. <laughs> we got one, yes. Oh, wicked. Oh, happy days, man. Is he a 20? Mint, isn't he? Oh, happy bloody days. Oh, look at how lovely he is. Oh, he is awesome. We like him. Like you, look at all them mental colours on him. That's a wicked, isn't he? He is thirty two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> He's pooping S7. He is. A little poop. I reckon he's pooped out about 10 pound of bait. So he would have been a 30 pounder if you'd have let me weigh him quicker. <laughs> Here is my lovely prize from Remby Lake. And that is a proper wicked looking carp. Look at him. He got it all going on, scaly, Orangey, yellowy, dark. Absolutely awesome. More than happy with that one. And a bite totally out of the blue as well. I was really feeling a bit dejected after walking up and seeing not a lot of fizzing going on in the stalking area. Come back to the swim, sat here thinking what's going to happen and middle rod just busts off out of nowhere with this beautiful one. 22 pounds on the S7, milky malt, pop up on a Ronnie rig. Awesome, absolutely awesome. And that is an awesome carp as well. So I'm sure you would all agree. Wicked, All right, let's get him back because I do believe the hammer from Hull has managed to catch himself one. Unbelievable, I know you're saying. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go and have a look at his one because it's considerably bigger than this one. And I've lost a pound off of the back of it, which is very annoying. Two pounds. But one pound, Vin. <laughs> one pound, Vin. <laughs> <laughs>
Abuse, all I get. You've got no mic. Your mic's on. My mic is on, yeah. Oh well, people want to hear you more than me anyway, Moz. That's true. Shall I narrate what you're on, saying? Narrate then. Oh, hammer from hole. <laughs> <laughs> Just about to get for shun. I caught a tuition up, Mozza. Are you netting it for me, Ollie? I'll net it for you, mate. Go on then, dude. Can you net it for me, Ollie? I'm incapable. <laughs> Shut up, Moz. Well, you said the right. Ooh, that's a good one, isn't it? He's a babby, isn't he? Go on, the Vinster. Go on, Hammer from Hull. These boys were struggling, so I thought I'd put some rods out and that. These boys are so good, I thought I'd put some rods out exactly how they did. I know what fish that is. It's one of the ones I want to catch. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it's called Cuttail. Is it? Yeah. It's like is that the Cuttail Lynn? Yeah, Cuttail Lynn, yeah. No, that's a bell to that. That's a min to that. Go on, then, boy. Is that him? Well done, Vinny. Mate, well done. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Vin. That's a belter, mate. Low to mid 30. Is it? Yeah. I said it was a little end, didn't I? Yeah, look, there's his tail, a little wizard tail. Mate, that's a belter, that one. Oh, look at him. That's a proper cool fish, that. I told you these boys were struggling. You had to get the cameraman in on the game, catch him a fish, save the shoot. No one what understood what he said then. We'll we'll put we'll put translations We're at the bottom here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You see, it's hard up north. We don't have easy lakes like this. We have hard lakes. So it's coming down here, it's just like what a know. chuck, what a chuck. Thirty-one twelve, thirty-one ten. Yeah, we'll have that. So when I'm out filming the boys, it's it's not often that I get the opportunity to get the rods out, but because we've kind of got this place for ourselves for the while, and the boys are in the swims to the left, this swim was kind of free, so I thought, I did all my filming yesterday afternoon, I thought I'd chuck some PVA bags out, because you never know, and this morning, one of them has gone off with one of the, what fish is it, Ollie? The cut tail linear at 31 pounds 10. Yeah, what a result. A little bit of fizzing in the swim this morning, so all I've done is I've just chucked some PVA bags on them and uh, a mix that I've been using this year that's been doing me really well, just the crayfish mini mix and maxi mix with a bit of the crayfish heavy bag mix, a little bit of hydrospod syrup on it and just literally just fishing bags, putting no bait out, just a little PVA bag little dumbbell wafter on it and uh, yeah what a result so Moz has had a bite out of the main swim I've managed to sneak one out of this swim so uh, yeah we're hopeful for the rest of the day and tonight see if we can maybe nick a couple more fish before we get off excellent stuff nice Sounded like you then. It's because I'm weird too long. Right, well I'm now in the car park swim where I put a little bit of bait in last night. I come down here at first light and there was 
sort of a, what looked to be like a small pod of fish around the bait, but they weren't necessarily feeding on it. Um, and now we've obviously seen Moz's fish and Vinny's fish, and they're still here. I've got a couple really in close here. And just as that reed line comes out into that channel out there, there's a couple out there, there's one here. So I've just set up my little 10 foot stalking rod. I'm just gonna drop one rig in. I'm just gonna sit here and wait until I know where the main bulk of the fish are and just try and get a rig in amongst them. And then just sit down here for a couple of hours and just see if we can nick a bite. Definitely looks likely for one. Vinny's obviously had one off the side of this bay here. One has just shown off the island as well. So there we go, another bit of bubbling just off that channel. So I've got options here, so I'm just going to get a really small patch of bait in the spoon, ship it out there and just lower it in amongst them. And hopefully we can try and nick a quick bite and I can get one myself. Well, with that bubbling up in that car park swim, ended up coming to nothing after a little while. But the fish have clearly moved along the channel into these pads that's in a bay on the far side. And there's a swim on this side. It's one of the only swims on this bank, but it gives me access to those pads. And there's one just behind the island here as well. So I've got two rods now, and I'm just gonna ship them out just in a couple of areas where I see these bubblers. And, um, see if we can nick one from over here the fish are definitely still here so it's definitely still worth a go just chasing them around a little bit but by dropping them in with a pole i don't have to cast a lead in and spook them so fingers crossed this works Right, let's get this in. So for me today, I've sat put in the swim and it's been really quiet in here for some reason. And it felt like I should have had one. Now there was a fish earlier on that come cruising past the swim with his shoulders out and all that. And he went up the back there as well towards the willow where I had the bite this morning. But nothing happened and he looked a good one as well he did look a good fish but like I say absolutely nothing no liners seen the odd show here and there and they've been more sort of along that reed line where it was really twiggy where I led it up yesterday but they've been about two rod lengths off so I'm wondering whether to move this or whether to just stick with my guns at the moment I'm not sure I'll probably just stick with this where I've been fishing and then go round, have a rebate over the rods. These other two rods I know are absolutely perfect. I cast them out earlier on this morning. Obviously I had that bite on the middle rod, whacked it back out there, perfect. So I don't think I need to make any more disturbance than I'm already making in the swim. I just need to get round there, give them a rebate and hopefully we get one this evening. Get a new update on that first though. Right, well we've seen out most of the afternoon now in this swim and it is now a very different looking swim than it was a couple of hours ago. Um, the fizzers that were in here stayed in here for a little while um, but unfortunately they have, they do seem to have dissipated. 
um, and at least for the last hour and a half, we've only really seen one fish, whereas there was clearly at least half a dozen in there earlier. To be honest, I'm sort of a bit deflated. I'm sort of looking back on, on what we've been doing here um, and I don't feel like I've done anything wrong. I don't feel like I should have done anything differently. Um, for whatever reason, these fish have just pushed out. They're clearly a lot moodier, these fish, than what I um, initially thought they would be coming to this venue. Um, I thought if we got on them, get a couple of rigs in place and fish effectively, we'd you know start catching a few, but they clearly know when they're being fished for. Um, I think the best thing now to do is to get back into the original swim, get some rods sorted for the night ahead, refresh the rigs, get a fresh bit of bait out there. Um, spoke to Mozza earlier, he's, ha he's had a couple showing in, in the zone from where he caught this morning. So fingers crossed with any luck, us moving down here and angling from here has moved them into that middle section a bit. Maybe they've just moved up the pond a bit. So I think let's get back to the swim Let's get sorted out, have a bit of food because I'm absolutely starving. And hopefully we can try and bag one out of our swim this evening. There we go. Sorry, I blinded you. That's all right, dude. <laughs> well, I had a drop back and I was like, oh. um, And then I picked it up and bent into it. I was like, oh, there's one on. Mm. And you know when you're pulling it back and you're like, there's nothing there. Yeah. And then it, it's just woken up a bit down here. Nice, man. Oh, he's here. Looks a bit old, doesn't he? A bit like patchy. Only a bit of scraper though. Yeah. yeah. Well, here we go. My first Renby Lake Carp. And I have to be honest, I was a little bit concerned after, um, oh, a little bit heavier than I first thought, after putting all the effort in yesterday, stalking, trying to nick one, and it not happening. Come back to the swim a little bit dejected, getting the rod sorted, sort of trying to get my head back in the game. And it's gone. And we've still got plenty of time yet. And at 31 pounds an ounce is, that will certainly do. Awesome. Wicked to get a 30 pounder of the first trip as well. Because like I said before, this is gonna be a little wind, winter ticket for me. So I'm sort of earmarking all the little spots we find and any sort of fish we see showing. And hopefully it'll give me a good start for the winter to come. But happy, happy days, 31 pounder. That'll do, won't it? A five. <laughs> Cushy. Very nice. Nine bread was lovely. Poppadom was, was lovely. Yeah, Pompadom was nice. Pom Pompadom. <laughs> right, you need to put in the comments what is a Poppadom? Because Mozza seems to think it's either Pompadom or Poppy Dom. So do we need to change the name of what they are yeah, or does Mozza just need to learn a little bit?
You be the judge. <laughs> oh, well done, man. A bit miserable this morning. That's great, isn't it? Yeah, rain. Confined to the old bivvies. All morning, yeah, not the one. Yeah, yeah, we've all been cooped up in the bivvies. We've got this tiny little window at the moment where it's not raining. So you ended up getting one last I night. I did, yes. Which was nice. Probably what, sometime around midnight, something like that. Left hander, the single that I just put two thirds of the way across. Mm. You know, we're all fishing the tree lines here, aren't we? Yeah. And I didn't really see anything else to go on. So that sort of hinge that I just flicked out there busted off. Well, I say busted off, it dropped back. Hmm. Wound into it and then, yeah, playing it in. Sort of led it in like a dog on a lead and then up popped a 31 pound an ounce's mirror. Yeah, that'll so, do. So, yeah, that'll do yeah, nicely, that'll won't it? do, yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, unfortunately for us, the lake's got really busy this morning, hasn't it? Yeah. I think every swim bar one now yeah. isn't taken, so... Yeah, that it makes it a lot more pressure now, doesn't it? Restricts so, us a lot now, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially. Well, yesterday we were benefiting from having a mooch up and down the lake, seeing mm. where we could find them. And, you know, yesterday I'd gone down to that pad's end. Well, yeah. now that's all busy. And nearly every swim on this bank, all the, obviously all the swims are on one bank, but every swim up the bank's now taken. So we've got, we're very confined now. Yeah. Um, what that's going to do to the angling pressure, whatever, I'm not sure. It's an intimate venue. Again, you know, we're not really seeing a lot this morning, have we? I think that oh, rain's yeah. definitely done something. It's, yeah, yeah. It seems a lot quieter than it did yesterday. Yeah, we've got these little windows where it stops raining now, where you'd like to think that a bite might happen, but yeah. I don't know, I don't know. It's just, the rain's gonna start again soon, so that's gonna end the things even more, I feel. Yeah. But it's meant to be stopping at two o'clock today, so I think we'll probably assess the situation yeah. then, and see whether yeah, we're, just we're gonna around. go or maybe try and squeeze another night in, who knows? Yeah. But at the moment, could really do with a bite, and it feels like a bite might happen any moment. It does, doesn't it? Mm. it, it I think it's one of them, you just you can just get random takes, it's so shallow. Yeah. Fish can still move around, and with these other anglers here now, yeah, flicking yeah. leads about, it's gonna get moving, so. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Right. Sit around, I think. Yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm in no rush to get these rods redone. I'll just. No hope that something might happen now this rain stopped. Well, I'm absolutely drenched. Me and Moz just had a bite simultaneously, and my left hand has just absolutely melted. I told you that rain was going to get merry, didn't I? Yeah. It's been absolutely tipping it down for hours now, and where we were thinking our chances had gone and we were contemplating going home. This rain's really warm and it and I spurred these fish on. We've not seen anything show and this one's just flat rotted me. I've had to run round to Moz to swim to pull it away from the tree line. Just bow waving on the surface. Oh, this is going some again. Right in front of the swim next door now. Fortunately, the lad next door hasn't got his rods out. Let's try and gain a bit of line on him now. Come on. 
got a big overhanging tree to my left here as well, so I've got to be careful and keep that tip low. I can like just try and tease him back now, get him under control. Got no idea how big it is, but whatever it is, it's a powerful fish. Oh, the things we do for carp fishing. Here we go, right, let's move that rod tip out of the way. Come on. Oh, he's a nice one. He's a very nice one. Go on. Oh, thank God for that. Get in. Oh, well this. That was a bit of fun fishing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and a lovely way to end as well on a couple of bites, even though it was pouring down with rain when we both had our Yeah, we both bites. had to go and get changed, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Because we got a little bit moist. Yeah. But I'm yeah. always happy when I get the bigger one. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> mine's, well, mine's bigger, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fish that Bart normally catches, I may add, but obviously um, giving him a bit of grief yesterday, he loves a 10 pound common. But this is no doubt a self-setter from the lake because um, I would imagine this has no doubt been born in here, grown on to be oh. the fine little figure he is. But um, mate, what a way to end the trip, eh? Cracking spell, wasn't it? Yeah, so that is a very fitting way to end this film. Absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks to the RG guys for letting us on, do a bit of filming here. I believe this is probably the first ever film to be done here as well, which yes, is pretty is, cool. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as we are fishing in it and we will see you next time. Bubbler. Well done, Vincent. <laughs>